As spectacular of a defensive stand the Utah Jazz had to close out their win against the Clippers in Game 1, it was the consistent discipline they had guarding Kawhi Leonard that won them the game despite missing 21 consecutive field goals. It's a superstar-driven league, but more importantly, if you want to win, you need to be able to limit other teams' superstars. And while Kawhi can't be shut down completely, the Jazz did what they could to make his life difficult and to limit his impact on the game. The Jazz limited Kawhi to 23 points, which is still a lot, but somewhat pedestrian for Kawhi. And most importantly, they limited him to only four free throw attempts, and Kawhi was a negative 12 for the game. In this video, I want to break down Utah's game plan to take Kawhi out of the game as much as possible in order to break the spirit of the Clippers without their leader doing well. While the Jazz preferred to have Royce O'Neal guard Kawhi, in the second quarter, Bojan Bogdanovic was matched up with him, and here he denies Kawhi from getting the ball. As Kawhi tries to post him up in the high post, Bojan denies the entry pass, and the counter for that is to backdoor cut. But Niang isn't really too concerned with Terrence Mann, so he protects on the backdoor cut, and once Bogdanovich has recovered, Niang rotates back to Mann on the drive. Once the drive is stymied, Bogdanovich once again stays in the passing lane so Kawhi can't get the ball. Mann tries to drive once again, but this time Gobert helps so he has to kick it out, and it's a shot clock violation. And here's another example of Bojan playing ball denial against Kawhi, while the rest of the Clippers try to get a good look. And the possession ends with DeMarcus Cousins missing a three. On this play, the Clippers are more determined to get the ball into Kawhi in the low post, and Bogdanovich tries to get in front to steal the entry pass. So Mann has to throw the ball over Bogdanovich. Notice how despite Cousins being a generally respected three-point shooter, Gobert is very willing to leave him in order to protect the basket on the more imminent threat in Kawhi. When Kawhi catches the ball, he finds himself in a trap, and Gobert lets him out of the trap since Bogdanovich has recovered. Now here's the interesting dynamic that nobody's going to talk about. Gobert is worried about the three second call, so he dances outside of the paint, and immediately once his feet are outside of the paint, he wants to go back in. Once he goes back in, Kawhi uses his momentum against him to time his kickout pass to Cousins. But Cousins doesn't even look to shoot, and the funny thing is he ends up getting a three on a later action on this play, but the key here is the Jazz are making life tough on Kawhi. And when Royce O'Neal comes back in the game, we see him apply full court pressure on Kawhi until he gives the ball up. Then he applies mid court pressure to Kawhi, really getting into his grill even at the half court line. This forces Batum to set his screen extremely high, so O'Neal can not only be aggressive with his pick and roll defense, but he can also go under the screen without getting punished with a three. Kawhi is so good that he still ends up drawing a shooting foul, but you can see how hard he had to work for that shooting foul. And here's the quintessential Rudy Gobert defensive possession, where the Jazz have him help off of his man in order to double Kawhi. But he's not full on doubling Kawhi, as once again you can see him dance to avoid the three second call. While he's providing help on the driving lane, he's also ready to rotate back to the weak side if necessary. The idea here is that the Jazz are having their weak side defenders each defend two players, ready to rotate to whoever gets the ball. But the Clippers do something smart here and have Rondo cut, which forces Ingles out of the corner, and essentially Bojan Bogdanovic is forced to make the rotation from a further distance. The Jazz get lucky here as Batum misses a good look, but once again the Jazz are just not allowing Kawhi to beat them. More of the same on this possession where the Clippers go back to Kawhi in the low post and Gobert completely leaves his man to provide help on the baseline, and the Jazz weak side defenders both have to guard two Clippers. The Jazz rotate well this time on the kick out and swing, and Jackson misses the contested three. 
On this one, once again, the Clippers try to feed Kawhi in the low post, but when the entry pass is made, Gobert really tries to use his length to get a steal. He doesn't get the steal, but it forces the pass to be made pretty far from the basket. And once again, we have that dynamic where Gobert is trying to avoid the three second call. And Kawhi times going middle exactly when Gobert tries to get out of the paint. It's a smart move by Kawhi, but he misses this one. On this one, Royce O'Neal fronts Kawhi, and this time Bojan Bogdanovic swarms him on the catch from the weak side. At this point, there are three Jazz players swarming Kawhi, so he has to kick it out, and Bogdanovic rotates to the corner and runs Morris off the line. O'Neal recognizes that he needs to help on the baseline since Bogdanovic is playing the shot, and when Morris drives, he has nothing. At this point, Bogdanovic rotates back to Kawhi and forces him into exactly what the Jazz want, a contested mid-range jumper. Now instead of the post, we see a double drag screen this time for Kawhi, and the Jazz hedge it, and then they leave Rondo in order to double Kawhi. Rondo cuts, but Favors rotates to deny the layup, and the Jazz are just everywhere on this possession. And by late in the third quarter, the Clippers can't even get the ball into the post to Kawhi, as Favors is ready to rotate to help on the post, which is being fronted, and he's also ready to rotate back to Zubats. Then Favors forces a jump ball. The next couple of plays we're going to see Kawhi run a pick and roll with Reggie Jackson as the screener, and the first thing to note here is how much Bogdanovich is pressuring him. Then on the screen, the Jazz hedge it, but most of the time with a hedging defense, the ball handler's defender will go over the screen, but in this case, Bogdanovich goes under the screen as Clarkson hedges out. This allows Bogdanovich to recover for when Kawhi drives. The Clippers get an open look, but Kawhi has got to be frustrated at this point. Same action on the next play, with Bogdanovich applying even more pressure without fouling. The Jazz once again have Clarkson hedge while Bogdanovich makes sure to go under the screen. This time Kawhi wants to go the other direction, but Bogdanovich is still waiting for him. This creates the perfect opportunity for Jackson to roll, but Mitchell sees this and rotates from the corner, and he probably gets away with a foul here, but it ends up in a turnover. And the bad calls went both ways in this game, as you'll see on this play, as Bogdanovich once again fronts Kawhi in the low post, but this time on the catch, Mitchell rotates over to swarm him, and Mitchell strips Kawhi. But Kawhi gets the ball back, and while Gobert is ready to block him on the putback attempt, Kawhi comes down with the ball to avoid the block, and the travel isn't called. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks for checking it out, and remember to subscribe to this channel for notifications on future videos.